Now that I have my database set up, I want the home controller to be able to get a list of all the departments in that database and hand it off to a view to render. The simplest possible way to do that would be in the index action of my home controller, look at the department property of an iDepartment data source, that's all the departments that are available, and simply take that value and pass it off to the view. There's another overload of the view method where you pass in the model for the view to render. At that point, the view should be able to grab that object, loop through the departments, and build some HTML so the user can see all of the departments that are in the database. The one catch here is that initially, I wanted the controller to only know about iDepartment data source. That makes things a little more testable and a little more flexible. But right now, it is explicitly creating an iDepartment data source by instantiating a department DB. That's the class that we just derived from DB context that uses the entity framework. This is easy enough to fix up. If I truly just want the home controller to only know about iDepartment data source, then I would remove that hard-coded dependency and define a constructor where I say, if you're going to create me, what you need to do is pass in the iDepartment data source that you want me to use, and I'll assign that to a private field. Now my home controller knows nothing about department DBs. The one hitch to this is if I hit Control F5 to build and run this application, is that the MVC runtime doesn't know how to create a controller that doesn't have a default constructor. A default constructor is a constructor that doesn't have any parameters. It's parameterless. That, fortunately, is a very easy problem to fix. What I just need to do is plug in some additional components into the MVC runtime that can create that controller for me. And there's several of these components out there. They're typically known as inversion of control containers. There's one called Ninject. Microsoft has one called Unity. I'm going to go out and look for one called Structure Map, and I'm going to look for the MVC3 version of Structure Map. It still works with MVC4, just they just haven't updated the explicit name here to say MVC4. I'm going to select that particular NuGet package, say please install this. That's going to add some code-based configuration files and assembly references into my project. I just need to find one particular file that should be under the dependency resolution folder. It's called IOC.cs, and this basically configures structure map. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on dependency injection or what this is actually doing, but if you look at this code, what I'm going to say is that when you see something that needs an I department data source, then the concrete type that I want you to put into that component is a department DB, that type. And now structure map plugs into the ASP.NET MVC runtime. When the MVC runtime sees that it needs to create home controller, it relies on structure map. It says, dear structure map, do you know how to create one of these? And structure map will look at this and say, oh, I need to, I need to call this con controller, but I need something that implements this interface. Fortunately, someone has configured department DB to be used as an I department data source. So I'll just create that controller for you, pass along this object, and everything will work just fine. The only other thing that I'm going to add here is a method that tells Structure Map to scope this to, to a particular HTTP request. And now I have everything for this to work except for the view. At this point, we have a view, but it doesn't know anything about departments. And instead of using this existing view, let me show you a quick way to do this. I can right click inside of this method and say add a view and I'll get this add view dialog that can create things for me pretty quickly. This is what we call scaffolding in ASP.NET It's the scaffolding that builds out things for you. I can say I want a strongly typed view that is a view that knows what type of model is being passed into it. I can say that the model I'm passing in is a department. Actually, it's a list of departments. So please scaffold out a view for me that uses my default layout page that would display a list of departments. And if I click add, I'll get some HTML markup and razor instructions to dump out a list of departments. Here's a for each item in that model. Give me a display for the item name and then provide some links. I'll hit control F5 to run with structure map in place and our SQL server set up. We'll hopefully get a quick list of departments.
And there's our departments, engineering, sales, shipping, and human resources. So I scaffolded that view out. You don't need to use scaffolding, and you can always come in here and modify things. In fact, let me just start this over. I want the title of this page to be all departments. And in fact, I will have an H1 tag here that outputs viewbag.title. And I can do that with one of the razor C sharp expressions just by including at at the front. And then I'm going to create an unordered list of these departments instead of a table, which is what the scaffolded code gave me. And I can say for each department in the model, there's a model directive at the top of this view that tells Razor exactly what type of model should be passed into it. So it should be expecting an I enumerable of department. That means I can loop through the model and get a department out for each object. For each object, I'll create a list item that just has the department dot name. Let's save that and see what this looks like. And there we have all departments again, engineering, sales, shipping, and human resources.